Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X research and professional physicist. And today I'd like to talk to you about complex plasmas and brown dwarf stars. Recently, some video footage showing an experiment, which is a part of the Plasma Crystal 4 or PK4 research collaboration between the European Space Agency and the Russian Federal Space Agency was released. Now, this experiment was carried out on the ISS, or the International Space Station, and it was on complex plasmas. And we see here in Figure 1 some of the still images from that footage. We see here the plasma being ignited by electrodes. We see the resulting material. It's gas, and it has something with uh, in that seems to be liquid because it flows. And here we, say, we see the same thing. It's just um, um, a close-up image of the same. Here it looks red because it seems to be illuminated by a red laser light. Now, plasma is the fourth state of matter, and it is the state of matter um, in which if we have um, a gas and if it is ionized, um, it becomes a plasma. This plasma is thought to make up 99% of visible matter in the universe. So basically, it's what uh, we see inside bright stars. And um, most of this plasma in the universe is made up of hydrogen and helium that have been ionized and electrons. But complex plasmas are a little different because complex plasmas can actually exist in the liquid and the solid phases. So here what we see is a, comp a complex plasma that seems to be in the liquid phase. This is why we see this material flowing. Now, uh, another word for complex plasmas is strongly coupled plasmas, and this refers to... Um, the particles having an interaction energy, which is greater than or equal their kinetic energy. And this means that um, complex plasmas or strongly coupled plasmas have to have a high density and a low temperature, which is not actually easy to obtain. A normal plasma in, um, in a discharge tube is at a low density, and we do get high density plasmas, but these are usually at high temperatures, and we find these in the tokamak. A complex plasma can be produced in a plasma chamber. Um, if we have a noble gas inside it, which is ignited with an RF frequency, and if microparticles are injected into the chamber as well then a low-temperature plasma can be created. The RF discharge is, at a, is usually at a potential difference of between 100 and 1,000 volts, and the frequency is between 1 and 100 megahertz. The injected microparticles are micron-sized, and um, they could be monodispersed plastic spheres, and these have diameters of between 1 and 10 micrometers. These are also called dust particles. And now, because electrons in the plasma have high mobility, that is, they're basically free to move around and therefore move easily, they collect on the surface of the microparticles, which then acquire a large negative charge. And this, in turn, produces a repulsive interaction inside the plasma. Then, um, within seconds of the plasma being injected with microparticles and being um, ignited, we get a crystal forming. And this crystal is called a plasma crystal or a Coulomb crystal. And it has a hexagonal structure. And it can occur in a liquid or the solid phase, depending on some parameters such as particle charge, plasma temperature, and interparticle distance. And here we see an image of what the hexagonal structure um, of this crystal looks like. It's hexagonal because we have six particles around each one, each particle. So if we look at this particle here and we count the number of particles around, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And this is a very repetitive, very regular structure, and therefore crystal structure. 
um, in this plasma crystal. Um, and this Coulomb crystal forms because it's energetically favorable for the particles in it to arrange themselves in this way. And um, this was discovered in 1994, this plasma crystal, at uh, the Max Planck Institute for Extraterrestrial Physics. So it's not completely new, um, but it is difficult to do research on it on Earth um, because we only are able to produce small areas where this uh, crystal structure forms. So... Um, in space, uh, we should be able to get larger areas and be able to do the research uh, more easily. Now, what it takes is the combination of two things, normal plasma, which is made up of ionized and therefore pos positively charged atoms, and then free electrons. And this is then combined with dust particles or micron-sized particles, and this is what they look like through a telescope. And then when these two are combined, we get what's called a complex plasma or dusty plasma, which has a crystal structure and can occur in the solid phase and in the liquid phase. Now, this is interesting because strongly coupled or complex plasmas are expected to occur in white dwarfs. Uh, and white dwarfs are uh, basically stars um, that have gone through a certain kind of evolution uh, through the red giant phase. Um, so they were main sequence stars once, but now they have become white dwarfs. And because my research is mainly on uh, planet X or the brown dwarf stars in our solar system, which more recently I have been naming stellar cores. And brown dwarf stars are basically white dwarfs that have cooled down to the point they, that they can only emit infrared radiation, at least when they come into the solar system. Once they get to the sun, of course, that starts to change because they absorb energy from the sun. But the fact that um, these complex plasmas are associated with these objects is very interesting to me because I have been wondering why there is material on the surface of the stellar core that seems to be solid. And I think the complex plasma and the fact that it can um, occur in a solid uh, phase may be a possible explanation. Uh, we do know that this object takes this material that's attached to it and ionizes it, produces a diffuse gaseous plasma that we can see here, and exchanges it with the sun's plasma. So here we see the sun's plasma from the corona uh, being drawn towards the object, accumulating on its surface. And at the same time, the material that it ionizes, as you can see here, this was a few months after this image was taken, and the object still had a lot of ionized material on its surface, uh, par uh, probably part of its ionization envelope. Um, and here it has a lot less. So it exchanged, I think, a lot of it with the sun. So the sun's obtaining this material, and it is gathering uh, plasma from the sun. Now, in addition to these very large stellar cores, we also have uh, the smaller ones that have these thick ring-shaped or toroidal-shaped ionization envelopes. And these look like clouds, but um, it's possible they're not in a gaseous state either. They could be uh, more in a solid uh, phase or in a liquid phase uh, because basically these are the same objects. These are just a lot larger than these ones. And uh, so it's possible, at least close to the surface, that these objects would also have uh, this type of material in the solid phase. And therefore, it's possible that these ionization envelopes are complex plasmas. So uh, complex plasmas contain neutral particles from a noble gas, which is usually argon. But um, because um, helium is also a noble gas and helium is strongly associated with um, the 
envelopes on white dwarfs. It's possible that instead of argon, uh, these objects have complex plasmas uh, with uh, one of the main components being helium. Or, and um, the other material that makes up um, complex plasmas is, of course, ionized particles, electrons, and the microparticles, which are also called dust particles. So, in conclusion, the BK4 research done on complex plasmas gives some possibilities in the understanding of the material that is attached to the surface of stellar cores and possibly to uh, the material that makes up the ionization envelope of these objects. This is Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X physicist. Thank you for watching.